When Natalie was born, it, it looked like she was in a cocoon. Um, they called, when she was first born, I could remember hearing the doctors saying, oh, it's a colonial baby. And I thought, what type of baby is that? That must be a special baby. She must be a miracle. <laughs> um, none of the doctors had ever seen uh, or even heard of this condition. Um, and as you can imagine, I had lots of doctors and trainees and even nurses by the side of my bed. Um, they were all coming in to see what this child looked like. My name's Cathy and I'm Natalie Ford's mum. Um, I wanted to bring awareness via this uh, video of Natalie's condition because I feel it's really important that people should know what this condition is like, what it's like to live with this condition, what it's like to have other siblings that don't have the condition and, and you know the kind of difference there is between having somebody with this con with Natalie's condition and you know obviously children that don't have this condition. Um, well, when Natalie was born, it, it looked like she was in a cocoon. Um, they called, when she was first born, I could remember hearing the doctors saying, oh, it's a colonial baby. And I thought, what type of baby is that? That must be a special baby. She must be a miracle. <laughs> um, none of the doctors had ever seen uh, or even heard of this condition. Um, and as you can imagine, I had lots of doctors and trainees and even nurses by the side of my bed. Um, they were all coming in to see what this child looked like. Um, but to me, Natalie was just my special baby. It was my first child and she was my baby, my special baby. My name's Natalie, I'm 33 and I live in Hertfordshire. I suffer with a severe skin condition called lamella ichthyosis. Ichthyosis is a term used for the continuous scaling of the skin. It comes from the Greek word ichthy, which means fish. Although not everybody affected has the fish-like scales such as myself, it's a rare condition which can be inherited or developed later in life. For myself, it was a generic chemical imbalance which was caused by the keratin gene. Here I am today, I've come to Moorfields to have my checkup for my skin grafts of the upper and lower eyelids. I've just been to see the nurse, which um, does the eye test, um, which is called the Snellen chart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so. And the results are the same um, as they were six months ago, so they're very stable, so they're happy with that. Um, so now I'm just seeing the consultant, Miss Beaconsfield, um, and she says that the graphs are tightening, and we're just going to find out what treatment we can use to prevent it tightening further. <laughs> Right, I've just come out of my appointment. 
appointment with Miss Beaconsfield. Um, she's quite happy um, with the skin grafts that she has done. Um, so she's going to review me in a year's time, which is good. That's progress. Um, the corneal graft team, who done my uh, corneal graft in my right eye, um, are just a bit concerned that there's a bit of drying, um, which will affect the graft to reject. So they've given me some um, new eye drops to test, and they're going to review me again in two months time. So hopefully all is well and we'll be back on track. When Natalie was born her eyelids were actually inside out. Even though she was born as a cocoon, the inside of her eyes were turned inside out really and all you could see was the pink bit of her eyelids. Um, now her eyes were like because of the tightness of the skin, it was pulled outwards and upwards. So all you could see was the pink bit when she was born. Uh, so it, it makes the eyelids look red and it makes the eyelids look really sore. And it was very, very, she was very, very prone to having dry eyes and dry, drying of the eyelids. And it was got, always got like irritated by anything that touched it. You know, back in the days, they used to have to put a lot of eye drops in um, just to keep the eyes moist. Um, and I suppose that is one of the progressions of this is that nowadays they have operations that you can do. Um, Natalie's had grafts done, inserted grafts. What she had to do was um, treat part of her um, arm and get a bit of the skin that was really, really soft and then they were able to take that skin off and graft it onto her eyes, which, you know, if you look at it now, it looks absolutely fantastic. You know, they really have come a long way with um, medication or with treatments that she can get now. She's had um, her cornea of her eyes. This was not so long ago, the, her eyes, um, was her corneas in her eyes were so weak that one day she just wiped her eye and it it popped. You could basically say her eyes was her eyes was popping through. The black bit of her eye was actually coming through. I know it sounds a bit graphic, <laughs> but you know, even to me, it surprised me, and it surprised me the way she dealt with it. You know, she dealt with it fantastically. You know, but it the the dark part of her eye, her eye was actually coming through her cornea and what they did they they were able to push that back in and put a graft around it, something to actually hold it together. So um, even though she might not have say 50-50 vision, um, she still has got very very good condition uh, vision and the condition of her eyes through this corrective um, support that she's got in there is really, really good. Hey, my name's Cheryl Willis. Me and Natalie have been good friends for most of my life. We've been brought up together. Her family is my family. Um, I've never even noticed Natalie's skin condition. It's not been a part of that. It's not affected me at all. Never, never that much. Never my sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've always been good friends. Always, always will be. Um, she's always been a very strong, independent woman and I've never known it to bother her, her skin condition at all. Right, the reason for this video is because I want to build awareness for the condition of lamellar ichthyosis. Now, through that, I've um, built up a charity called Keep Smiling 
Um, the reason for all of this is because I had an appointment at St Thomas's um, Hospital last year, November, and all they could offer me was the same treatment they offered me about eight to ten years ago, which made my hair fall out. Now I got very upset and just couldn't understand why. So with that, it drove me to want to do this for myself and for all the other sufferers. In the early years, I constantly blamed myself for Natalie's condition, to be honest, because all I can remember was, you know, me having this child, my parents were in this country, and all I can remember was my husband, or Natalie's father at the time, his parents always saying, oh, well, we have nothing like that in our, in our family, there's nothing like that, there's no nothing like that in our family. So I found that I was constantly blaming myself for Natalie's condition. Um, but the more I bonded with her is the more I realised that no one was to blame really for this condition. This is like an act of God. You know, I was actually truly blessed and he'd actually, you know, given me this miracle and it, it, was, always, it was almost like a test, you know, what are you going to do with this miracle? Um, and I feel the way I raised Natalie, and that's exactly how I looked at it, I think the way I raised Natalie um, to have this kind of carefree attitude uh, to her condition was beneficial to her. Um, as she always seemed to cope very well with her condition. You know, unfortunately, society's reaction to her appearance was often hostile and, uh, and people would openly stare at her. And, you know, she'd often say to me, Mum, why are they staring at me? Because because she'd grown up with this, she never really realised there was anything wrong, you know, but the way they were staring, it, you know, you would think that she was some sort of monster with two heads. Um, you know, and I understand this, if this stems from maybe ignorance or stigma, but it's a problem really we should not take lightly, you know, we should really, and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this, because, you know, we should not judge, you know, not unless we can judge ourselves, we shouldn't judge others. Others, we should take others as face value and as they are. Everyone is human. Everyone's on the same level. You know, I used to worry. Well, I was worried for Natalie when she first started school because you know, most difficult times in a child' um, life is when she's at school. Um, but when you're at school and there's a, and there's and you've got a condition. You know, there's a possibility of being bullied, there's a possibility of being teased. But um, Natalie kind of had the same circle of friends during her nursery, infants and junior schools who grew to accept her really as she was because that's all they knew about her. You know, they just knew Natalie was Natalie. They didn't see Natalie as a child that had a skin condition. They just saw Natalie, um, which was great because um, she did have a great circle of friends. Um, and along with the head teacher that, of the school, of the you know infants and junior school that she went to, was absolutely fantastic. Mrs. Moore was Miss Moore was absolutely fantastic. You know she wouldn't allow anybody to bully or tease Natalie because again she had grown with Natalie as well. Uh, so when I started to worry again was when Natalie left junior school now. Um, and started to go to senior school, you know, obviously her earlier years in senior school. Um, but what happened there was, one of the nurses from Great Ormond Street Hospital came down to the school. And I always remember that they had a an assembly at the school and the nurse came down and she was fantastic. Uh, she visited the school to educate the, the whole school in an assembly. 
it was almost like it was just dedicated to Natalie, this assembly. Um, and they educated everybody on her condition. And I think because that was done in the beginning, um, even though she may have still been, you know, a little bit teased, a little bit bullied, it could have been a lot, lot worse. I think um, she didn't really get bullied or teased as much as she could have been. Um, and, you know, I, and I think she, I think she enjoyed her senior years. Even though she had a condition, everybody after that talk then saw her as Natalie. They didn't see her as Natalie with a condition, which was absolutely fantastic, you know. When I first joined the school, Natalie was in year three. And I have to say, the first thing I had to make myself do was to hold Natalie's hand. Mm. Because I had no understanding of her condition uh, and I will also say that I initially thought she had been in a fire and had third degree burns all over her body. I think the way Natalie has dealt with her condition over the years has been absolutely amazing. In the four years I've known, knew Natalie at school and I have known her since as a parent um, and her children attend my school currently, her mum took her for every sort of treatment she could possibly think of, Chinese medicine, Natalie's attended various hospitals, she has to be, had to be creamed regularly. In school she was creamed two or three times a day and one of the, th the difficulties that she had to overcome was the fact that her skin would fall off in great big chunks and often smell because of all the various um, creams that she had. None of the children ever, ever considered Natalie to be any different to themselves, which I thought was such a credit to her and to the children. If a new child joined the school, they were taken aback slightly and, like myself, thought she had been burnt severely. But never ever was Natalie ever bullied or ever called names about her condition. And she has dealt with it in the most mature and amazing manner. I spoke to all the children about her condition and I remember having quite a frank discussion with Natalie about how it felt um, and she told the children what life was like for her having to cream herself having to deal with the skin falling off and I think children then got an understanding of how difficult it was for her and if they ever came across another child or an adult like this, then we'd have a greater understanding. I fully support Natalie and her charity and hope that uh, she does really well with her fundraising for St Thomas's. Right, daily creams are important in keeping the skin moisturised. If not treated properly, it may result in splits, cracks, bleeds and infections. I find that for myself, the hot weather does my skin wonders. And as I've got older, it has progressed a lot. In my years growing up, I found it very hard and difficult at times. In my time at infants was hard, you know, as the kids were young and they'd stare and point and whisper. Um, and I just found myself coming home after school, locking myself in my room and just sitting there wondering why me? Why, why have I got to be different from the rest? And I just found it very hard. Now when I started senior school, it wasn't as bad, but it was more intense as the kids moved in groups. So I just felt neglected, you know, like no one really wanted to be near me or play with me. I'd just be on my own and um, there was a few people that I spoke to and got on with and you know would go around their house for dinner but most of the time I'd just be on my own but 
it's things like that that made me stronger and who I am today. Now when I left school I got a job at telecommunications. You know, I thought that if they can't see me then I'd be okay. But that really wasn't for me. So up until 2005 I was in and out of jobs. You know, I found it hard with like the customers or the kids staring and talking. Um, I realised that I'd had enough. I got depressed. Um, I let my condition get the better of me and so I turned to drugs. At that time in my life I felt like there was nothing to live for, that there was just no point. So I just would sit there and just indulge in drink or drugs and just hope that I wouldn't wake up. Now, <laughs> in 2010, I had my beautiful daughter and two years later I had a beautiful son. And I just want everybody to know that although you may have this skin condition, you don't need to let anything get the better of you. You just have to keep smiling through it all. I believe Natalie has adjusted really, really, really well and has managed to lead a normal, relatively normal life with her condition. And also, although this type of condition would require a strong person, a strong personality, this is my Natalie. She's an inspiration to others. And when you have people complaining about things like, you know, they'll think, oh, you know, they whinge and moan about this, they whinge and moan about that, they complain about the slightest thing. What you need to do is take a step back and think of what you're complaining about because there's always somebody out there that's worse off than you. Now, I can truly, truly say I am blessed to have Natalie as my daughter. I love her unconditionally and I'd have her no other way. She is, she, I have learned so much from her. You know, you, you grow in life because we're both growing, we're growing every day. And you know, every day that I see her, I see she is a strong, um, she's a strong woman. She's, you know, she's given me two beautiful grandchildren. Some people back in the days might think, oh no, I've got a skin condition, you know, I can't have any kids, I don't want to go out. They might seclude themselves, you know. But my Natalie has been absolutely wonderful. You know, she's, she's, she's one of the best things that's ever happened to me in life and I love her unconditionally. You know, I am truly, I can say, God is truly working miracles in my life because I'm truly, truly blessed with her. You know, but what I would also like to thank, say is thank you to my family. You know, my family has showed me an overwhelming support, um, helping me all the way through. Because without family, you know, blood is always thicker than water, as they say. My family has been overwhelming with their support that they've given to me and that they've given to Natalie during her 33 years of life. You know, I wish her long life, long prosperity. And I hope that you all can look at this video and think, wow, you know, that she has really been through a lot. I'm gonna stop complaining now because whatever I'm complaining about is minimal. And I just hope as well that you'll look up her charity and help towards it because just like everything else we need to fight or we need to we need to fund certain things to to be able to learn why things work this way so if it's possible to donate donate i love you all take care 
Natalie, you are simply the best. Now I'm here today to let people know with the same condition as me that you are still beautiful and still as handsome as the person standing or sitting next to you but for myself I will not be defined by my condition, there's more to me than what you see.